Thank you, and uh, thanks for the um, opportunity to talk. So I'm going to be talking about some um, work I've been doing, uh, early stages and work I've been doing as part of my PhD project under the supervision of Nick Cantas at Imperial. So just a quick outline, um, start with some motivations and backgrounds, um, go on to define the problem, run through briefly kind of the methodology you've been using, and then look at a quick application to the stochastic advection diffusion equation, uh, and then finish up with some conclusions and ideas for future work. Um, so some, some motivation. We're, we're particularly interested in um, applying kind of partially observed stochastic dynamical models uh, in environmental monitoring applications. So think of modeling something like air quality or pollutant concentration. Um, so we typically have some idea of the underlying process, uh, and we have some noisy measurements of that process. Um, however, the quality of statistical inference, so filtering, prediction, estimator, so forth, are often highly dependent on, firstly, our ability to accurately estimate, uh, estimate parameters in our model, and also to appropriately place any measurement sensors which we have available. Um, so these, these tasks are relatively well understood for um, a class of models which I'm actually going to be looking at, but they can prove challenging if the data is very high dimensional, or if they need to be performed online, or if they need to be performed simultaneously. Um, so it's the last two of those which I'm going to be focusing on in this talk. So, the problem sets up and some notation. Um, my assumptions are fairly restrictive. Um, I'm sure you'll note that straight away. Um, so I am looking at a class of linear diffusion processes. Uh, this is essentially just the continuous time version of a lot of the partially observed models we've seen already. So you have that uh, the signal we're interested in X uh, evolves according to some evolution operator, which depends on some potentially unknown parameters theta. Uh, and you have some noise term, which is just a a Venom process here, uh, and then our observation Y evolves according to some SDE, um, which is related to the signal by some observation operator C, which depends on the, um, the sense locations. And again, you have, an, uh, you have a measurement noise term in our observation equation, which again can depend on some unknown parameters. You'll probably mean Y in the equation. This one here? No, that's X. So that, that's mapping the signal to the observations. Oh. Uh, so it's just a, that's just a linear observation equation uh, in continuous time. Um, OK, so as I said, X is the process we're interested in, the latent signal. Uh, the signal noise is governed by this Wiener process with some incremental covariance, which depends on parameters. Um, and we have the Gaussian assumption for the original state. Um, and like I say, Y is the observation process. And uh, the measurement noise is governed by this other Vena process with some other incremental covariance. Um, and like I say, we're interested in this problem of jointly estimating the parameters, the true parameters for these equations, and obtaining some optimal, uh, in a sense which I'll define later, set of sense locations. So um, let's just go back to this system and first assume that both the parameters and the sense locations are known. Um, filtering for this for this system is obviously very well understood. Um, it's given by, in the continuous case, the kalman boosie filter. Um, so we know the posterior distribution of the latent signal is Gaussian. Um, and in particular, the posterior mean and the, co uh, the uh, conditional covariance evolve according to this SDE and this Riccati equation. And again, you note that both of these obviously depend on the set of parameters and the set of sense locations. OK, so let's move on to parameter estimation. Let's assume the sensors are fixed for now and just consider how to estimate these unknown parameters. Uh, we're going to assume that the, the model generates the observation process according to some true parameter, but that it's unknown. Um, OK, so like I said, we're interested in online estimation. So we want some estimator of the parameter, which is both measurable with respect to the observation sigma algebra and also recurf recursively computable, in the sense that as you go forward in time, it doesn't rely on the previous observations. Um, so we're going to use a maximum likelihood approach. There are various approaches to this problem, but we're going to use a maximum likelihood approach. So the first thing to do is define the maximum likelihood in terms of our optimal filter. And that's given by this expression here, by Gersonov theorem. Um, again, because we want to perform online parameter restoration, um, one approach to this is to kind of recursively seek the value of theta, which maximizes um, the asymptotic log likelihood. So you can think essentially of trying to find the parameters which, um, which maximize the log, uh, the, the log likelihood in the steady state. Um, how do we go about this? Well, 
we follow kind of a recent approach um, which was discussed in a paper earlier this year, which is a stochastic gradient ascent method. So essentially the parameter estimates follow a noisy ascent direction along the path of the observations using the gradient of the integrand of that expression we have for the log likelihood. So that essentially implies that the estimates are going to evolve according to this SDE. Um, so where we've now introduced some kind of scaling, some step size gamma t, um, and also some kind of preconditioning matrix if we need it. But in the simplest case, you can just take that as the identity. Um, so that's parameter estimation. Um, and we have this theorem again from this paper earlier this year, which essentially this theorem says that under certain conditions, I'm not going to go into those, but relating to kind of the ergodicity of the process and also the step sizes, we have that as t goes to infinity, that the derivative of the log likelihood evaluated along our parameter estimates actually goes to zero, or the parameter estimates go to the boundary of our parameter space. So essentially, it is doing what we want it to, this algorithm, the parameters are going to the optima of the likelihood. Okay, so that's parameter estimation. Let's look at the other problem, which is optimal sense placement. So now we go back to our, um, this, this model, which I'm sure you're sick of seeing. Um, and now we're assuming that theta is known, but the sense locations O are yet to be determined. Um, so how do we define optimality? Well, that's kind of standard approach is let's define some objective function, which is a function of the sense locations, and say our optimal locations will be the, uh, the values of O, which minimize this objective. Okay, so what's our objective going to be? Well, you can choose various different objective functions, but for us, we're interested in minimizing the uncertainty in our state estimate, our, our filtering estimate. So we can actually uh, find an objective function or find an appropriate objective function using kind of three very standard results. So the first is that, as we've seen already, the filtering covariance is the weak solution of the Riccati equation, and therefore it depends on the sense locations. It's a function of the sense locations um, via the observation operator. Um, secondly, the trace of sigma is equal to the expected value of the L2 norm of the error between our filtering estimate and the true signal. And finally, the filtering mean is optimal in the sense that it minimizes this, this expected value over all possible um, estimators. Um, so in summary, um, for a set sensor network defined by this observation uh, operator, the trace of the, um, the solution to the Riccati equation is both a function of the sensor locations and it provides a measure of the error between the state, the true state, and our state estimator. Um, so we go ahead and we define this objective function here, um, which is essentially the integral of kind of a weighted trace of this solution to the Riccati equation. Um, and essentially this, this potentially time varying weighting operator allows us to weight certain parts of the state estimate more significantly. So, Think, for example, we're interested in minimizing our state estimate at one point in our spatial uh, domain. <coughs> we can encode that through this weighting operator Q. Um, and again, we have this nice theorem, which essentially tells us an optimal set of sense locations uh, if we define our objective function like this do exist. So we're not wasting our time. We can actually find optimal sense locations. OK, so again, we want to perform this online. We want to use the observations as they arrive. So in the spirit of the, of the previous section, we consider kind of this asymptotic objective function. And again, in the spirit of the previous section, we use a gradient descent algorithm. Um, so the sense locations follow a descent direction according to the integrand of the gradient of, of this guy. And so we have this ODE for the sense locations. OK, so that's sense placement. Back to the system for one last time. And now we want to do both those problems at once. And let's do the obvious thing. and let's combine those two gradient, uh, gradient schemes. So essentially, now these two quantities are going to evolve, well, theta according to an SDE and O according to an ODE, and we're going to hope that um, they're going to go to where we want them to. So the, the thetas will go to the maximum of the asymptotic log likelihood, and the sense locations will go to the minimum of our asymptotic objective functions. OK, so that's the, that's the background. That's what we're doing. Let's look at applications. So, we consider uh, this 2D stochastic advection diffusion equation, which satisfies the model, model setup we had earlier. So it's, it's linear in, in the process U, um, and it also can, uh, it's, it's, it's relatively flexible in the sense that for different choice of these different parameters, um, so mu, sigma, and zeta, um, we can actually encode quite a lot of different 
types of behavior using this equation. Um, so let's define this formally as like a functional SDE. Um, so we're going to assume we're, we're working on the 2D torus, um, and the quantity we're interested in is this, is this scalar field. And so we can start by writing the deterministic version of this equation on, on some Hilbert space, which here is the, the, the space of periodic uh, square integral functions from, from our domain to the real line. And uh, what I want to emphasize here is the different parameters which we're going to have to estimate in this equation. So we've got a drift term, which kind of models the advection. We've got a diffusion term, and we've got a damping term. Um, and we go ahead, we follow a paper in RSSB from a couple of years ago, and we're going to decompose the diffusivity as kind of a composition of uh, translations and scalings. So essentially, we, we imply another three parameters. So we have a diffusion magnitude, which it, uh, determines how, how much diffusion we have. We have a, uh, another parameter, gamma, which determines the uh, magnitude of the anisotropy. And finally, a, another parameter, alpha, which determines the direction of our anisotropy. Um, OK, so how do, we, how do we turn this into the stochastic equation? Well, we introduce kind of noise in the standard way. So we, def we define some covariance operator, which acts on some basis for our Hilbert space as follows. And then we can define our Wiener process in this, in this way. So that's just the standard setup. The big question is, what do we choose for our covariance operator Q? Um, and we choose this guy. Um, this is a very, very popular choice in kind of spatial statistics. And it encodes, essentially, a matern covariance function. Um, and you can see here, we've now got additional two parameters to estimate in our equation. So kind of what people call a marginal variance and rho naught, which is some kind of spatial range parameter. OK, so that's the equation. This is just some realizations from that, from that um, spatial, uh, from that covariance, uh, that noise for different values of this spatial range. So you can see by changing that, that range parameter, we get kind of very different um, correlations between different spatial locations. OK, so having defined everything, we're interested in solutions of this SDE, which you see falls exactly into the framework we, we were talking about earlier. Um, so that's the signal equation, um, and that's just a quick realization from the signal equation for uh, two time steps. Um, now onto the observational equation. We have the same setup as earlier, precisely the same setup as earlier, apart from we've now introduced an additional bias term. So, for example, if you had bias sensors, then that's encoded in this term here in your SDE for the observations. Um, so essentially, we're assuming we have, like I said earlier, m different sensor locations. And so the operation obs uh, observation operator is of this form. And in particular, we assume that each sensor location, our observation operator, um, gives essentially a weighted average of the true signal around that point in space. So in that case, you, you have kind of this integral form for the observation operator. So um, you have some kind of kernel times the function. Um, it's just some kind of weighting function which weights the observation uh, as a function of the distance between the sensor and the point in the spatial domain. Um, some final assumptions. We assume that the sensors are independent, so that's a fairly um, reasonable assumption. And we also assume that we can categorize the sensors into two different classes. So uh, firstly, variance classes. And what I mean by that is that if two, if two sensors are in the same variance class, they have the same, they're assumed to have the same variance. Again, remember, we're estimating this. Um, and similarly for bias classes, if two different sensors are in the same bias class, we assume that they have the same <coughs> bias. Um, so therefore, the observation equation contains these P1 variance parameters and these P2 bias parameters. So to summarize, that's the complete set of uh, parameters which we need to estimate in this equation. Um, so on to results. And I'll, I'll split this up like I have the talk into firstly kind of the parameter estimation scenario. Secondly, the sensor placement scenario, and thirdly, kind of the joint case. Um, so parameter estimation. Um, these uh, eight you see here are from the signal equation. Um, and essentially, what you see is the, the gradient ascent algorithm estimating these correctly. So this is t along the x-axis. So as t moves forward, our online uh, uh, algorithm essentially moves our estimate from the initial conditions, from the initial uh, uh, estimate, sorry, towards the true, the true values. Uh, and this here is the, uh, the observation variance. We've assumed here that all the sensors have the same variance, and there's no bias. Uh, so this is 
this is just we just have one variance parameter. Um, another scenario. Um, in this scenario, you have that uh, the parameters might be time uh, dependent, and in particular, that at particularly instances in time, that they might <coughs> make a step change. And again, you see that the algorithm we've used can reflect that and actually uh, respond to that quite quickly. So, um, for example, here, this row naught, the spatial range parameter of our of our covariance function changes, and our algorithm reflects that. Um, and finally, this is just a situation where you have multiple different sensor biases and mul multiple different sensor variances. And again, the algorithm works. It picks up those different, um, those different variances and biases and estimates them correctly. Um, OK, so some quick remarks. Um, it seems to work relatively well. Um, clearly, the rate of convergence does vary between parameters. In general, it seems to work better or work faster for the observation equation. Um, However, here's one thing we should note as a gradient, gradient algorithm, it's obviously fairly sensitive to initialization and to step size. Um, one quick remark on computation, I haven't really talked about this too much about the implementation, but under certain assumptions and using um, kind of a Fourier basis for our Hilbert space when we do the implementation, um, you can implement the algorithm at a cost which scales as Tn log n rather than Tn cubed, which is kind of the standard cost. So a fairly significant uh, saving as n increases. Um, OK, second scenario, this is where we're placing the sensors. So what is, what is this showing, and what's the setup here? Well, this is a setup where in that weighting matrix Q in our objective function, we've said we would like, we're interested in the estimate of the state at eight particular locations. So they're denoted by these kind of dashed lines. And then you can see that we have eight sensors as well, as, as well in this setup. And all of the sensors converge to one of the locations that we're interested in. Um, so this is just another graphic showing that. So we start off the sensors at these different green locations, and our algorithm nudges them essentially towards the red locations, the weighted observation locations, which is where we're interested in performing our estimation. Um, a, second, a second simulation uh, for, the, for the sensor placement scenario. Um, in this case, we now assume that the, the noise in the signal is weighted in a certain part of the domain. So in this case, it's weighted in the center of the domain. So in that case, to minimize the uncertainty in the total estimate of the, uh, of the state, you'd expect your sensors to go towards that noisiest part um, of, the, of the domain, and that's what happens. Um, so they all converge from their initial locations to that central location. Um, so again, some, some quick remarks. Um, it seems to work. This algorithm is actually quite robust to choice of set size and initialization. Um, and some further simulations have indicated that using a large number of low quality, high variance sensors, we can actually outperform a smaller number of higher cost, uh, lower, um, lower variance sensors. So that's quite interesting in terms of applications. Um, and finally, the third scenario where we're doing both of these in practice, and I don't have too many um, graphics for this one, but essentially what's happening here, well, we're doing both of those things in parallel. A similar setup to what you saw earlier, but now both of them are happening at the same time. And what we're seeing is both the parameter estimates and the sensor locations are going to where we want them to. Um, OK, so some quick, quick conclusions. Um, essentially, I've looked at a very restricted class of models, but consider this problem of jointly estimating parameters and placing sensors optimally. Um, and we've, we've shown how this can be applied um, relatively successfully to a 2D uh, stochastic convection diffusion equation. Um, more importantly, some future, some future work. Um, the algorithm works relatively well, but at the moment, there's no kind of theoretical justification for why. Um, so at the moment, what we're working on is a proof similar to the proof um, that we saw just in the parameter estimation case that um, both the parameter estimates and the sensor locations do, in fact, converge towards the true values. Um, and this is going to require kind of some conditions on ergodicity of the latent signal and the filter and the tangent filter. Um, Given that these two processes could have different time scales, we might also need to incorporate some ideas from, from multi-scale methods. Um, secondly, and perhaps more importantly, is kind of expanding this framework. So firstly, um, something which is increasingly common in environmental applications is the use of mobile sensors. So for example, air quality sensors deployed on cars, which can move around, possibly um, controlled by some kind of ODE. Um, and this, this framework's been considered, but outside of the additional uh, parameter estimation problem. Uh, so again, extending to that, that situation would be interesting. And obviously, this is the big one. Um, linear Gaussian assumption is huge. 
Um, I, won't, I won't try and skirt around that. And this, this is kind of hopefully leading to somewhere where we can consider a broader class of models. Um, so potentially combining it with other models using some kind of hierarchical model or using NKF or kind of suitable scalable particle methods. Um, and that is everything. Um, I would very much uh, welcome any questions. Okay, thank you for clearly getting through 52 slides in exactly 25 minutes. <laughs> Amazing. We have some questions? Yes. Um, so during the motion of uh, the observation sensor, do you take into account the observations that uh, are measured along this trajectory, in particular when you have mobile sensor? Yeah, so at the moment, um, the, the motion of the sensors in the algorithm is not controlled. So essentially, as they move, yeah, the observation reflects where they are in the domain. Uh, but they can essentially move anywhere, um, which is admittedly not that realistic. Um, that's why kind of we wanted to use kind of some controlled ODE controlling where they could go, and that would then fit into the optimization framework. Yes, understood, but I think that you should take into account the information that the sensor will measure during this motion. Sure, okay, because, so uh, you the see? historical knowledge from where it was previously. Yes, Okay. Of yeah, sure, sure. Like for balance, for instance, uh, yeah. in real... Uh, sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so my question is about the, uh, the sensor location. That, that's, of course, a highly nonlinear problem. And, and, of course, you're using stochastic gradient descent, but still, there's no guarantee that you will find the right solutions. I think one of the answers to your question is probably for the sensor locations, no, you know that beforehand, right? Or, or am I missing something? Um, not necessarily. Um, so uh, the scenario kind of envisaging is where you have a large number of sensors which you could deploy to some kind of domain and you don't know a priori where they'll go to minimize uncertainty in your estimate of, say, the state over the whole domain. Um, so kind of the application we're looking at is for air pollution, measuring air pollution in, in London, for example. Um, a company we're working with has a large number of these low-cost sensors, um, but at the moment they're kind of just placed ad hoc, and you're not sure what your, your estimate over a whole region the uncertainty could reduce by placing them in certain kind of locations. I understand that. Sure, sure, that's sure. obvious. But the question, the, the question is about the optimization. Right. The optimization is a highly nonlinear problem for sensor locations, typically. Sure. And you're using stochastic gradient descent, so there's no guarantee that you will find the right solutions. Sure, yeah. I guess there's no guarantee you're not going to get trapped in some kind of local optima. And um, is, that, is that then not an answer to one of your questions that you pose for the future? You push it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get. I understand. The kind of this is obviously much more tractable, and um, it would get much more complex when we kind of expand the framework. Um, but yeah, yeah. So the, I was just wondering when when is the the optimal position of your sensors deterministic, and when is it stochastic? So it's, it, it's deterministic if you consider the, uh, the problem of just placing the sensors without the additional parameter estimation problem, because in that case, uh, I won't go back to it, but the, um, it, it essentially separates from the, uh, from the observations in that case. It's independent of the observations. But when the parameters are changing, because the SDE for the parameter estimates depends on the observations, and the equation for the sensors depends on the parameters, it, it then depends on the observations in that sense, kind of implicitly. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Well, I've got a minute, so I'll ask a question. Sure. Uh, did you consider in the stochastic gradient descent or asset, did yeah. you consider preconditioning that with some kind of something that captures curvature information to try to uh, speed that up? So I've looked at using the Hessian. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't get very far with it. We were running into some issues with kind of singularity. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's something which could help with kind of, because uh, as I said at the moment, it's very, very kind of sensitive to how you choose the step size, and that would obviously help with that. Um, mm -hmm. We've looked at it, but not in not a huge depth at the moment. Okay. Singularity of the Hessian might suggest that the question of sensor placement is ill-posed. There are multiple sensor configurations sure. that would give you the same sort sure. of uncertainty reduction. Okay, uh, well, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and thank uh, the speaker one more time.